Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, what's up? This is the Drinks and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, King Bach, a.k.a. Bandana Sanchez. Well, <laughs> that's new to me, but okay, we'll go with it. Um, and I am the beautiful co-host, Miss V. Oh, Miss V, Miss V, Miss V, what's going on? Nothing, what you got going on? Not too much, how was your weekend? My weekend was very good. Mm, how was your week? My week? My week was pretty good. We had fun this week. We went out this week. We did go out this week. We went out to karaoke on Tuesday. Mm, what you what you do at karaoke on Tuesday? I had a I had a good time at karaoke on Tuesday. Um we did sing. We sang a song. We yeah. were on we were on um our Instagram. So if you follow us, you saw us at karaoke. It was fun. It was yep. a good time. It was, it was a, a good time. time. It was a good time. You uh you meet anybody while you while you while you were out? I mean, there were a lot of people there that I did not know. So, so we try. So some people were met. So we're trying to take this podcast to the next level, and your transparency <laughs> is. She was out there meeting sugar daddies. Hold on, no, 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 no. Out there meeting sugar daddies. That's, that's what that's it the, was. That's, okay. <laughs> Now, did Sugar Daddies approach me? Yes. Was I out there meeting Sugar Daddies? No. And you were no help, by the way. Let's talk about that. So, do you want do you want me to tell it? Tell what? Okay. So, hold on. No, no, no. So, first of all, we decide we're going to go out. We're going to hang out or whatever. We're like, okay, we're going to go to karaoke. Like, I love going to karaoke. Um... It's my thing. So, I get there, and somebody is there with a whole bunch of friends that I didn't know about. Like, I came by myself. I didn't know we were bringing entourages in our fan club. (laughs) But I get there, and somebody's at the table with eight people. And I'm like, okay. It It was six. Eight people. (laughs) And I'm like, okay. And one of them is like... Talking to me a lot. Like. He was trying to shoot his shot. Oh, he was trying to shoot his shot. I mean, you Grandpa him up a was shooting you him up with a uh, bad knees and ankles. <laughs> he was she, she, shooting. She put it on him. She put it on him. I saw. I saw what happened. <laughs> what, what, what did you see happen? What did you see happen? What happened? I, I saw that you put it on him and he had to sit down. Not sit down, but sat down. <laughs> And I'm over here asking him, like, hey, can you, like, help me out? And he and the guy is asking, like, can I talk to you? I was like, oh, my co-host has to vet everybody. And he's like, oh, I approve. I like this guy. I've known this guy for a long time. I thought it would be funny to see how you were going to maneuver yourself out of that situation. That was me maneuvering (laughs) out of the situation. I was like, hey. But, but, what if, but what if you was out and about by yourself? Then what? Then I just would have maneuvered away. Like, <laughs> he was with you. <laughs> it was his friend. <laughs> Can we talk about that? He was with you. Look, I came out there for karaoke, for the podcast. Them guys just happened to be out there. Don't put that all on me, because that was not my fault. Okay, what, what, did, you, what did you see happen? Uh, what I saw happen was that, um, you know, Sugar Daddy approached you. I spend a little money on you. He tried to shoot a shot. I don't know what happened. All right, so <laughs> what are we talking about today? No, how how was your weekend? Let's talk about your weekend. My weekend was pretty good. Uh, my weekend was pretty good. Um, hung out with the bros this weekend, so um, we definitely had a good time. Do a little yearly event where we all get together and get drunk. So I was I was, I was pretty messed up this weekend. Okay, that's a good time. That's yeah, a good time. Yeah, I'm still recovering. I see. I see. Recovering. You don't seem like you want to recover. Oh, no. You, know, you can't waste good liquor. I already <laughs> poured it. <laughs> you poured this after your your weekend. But okay, we'll go with it. It's still can't Sunday. Waste. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's still Sunday. Okay. All right, so uh, so today... Um, today, I'm going I'm to I'm 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 start off with a... I'm going to start off with a story. And then we'll go into... Um, we'll go into the actual topic of this podcast. Okay. Story so, time. Story time. Story time. Story time. So, um, every year, um, I go down to New Orleans and um, 
a lot of the bros, we all get together, we all go down to New Orleans. It's like bros from everywhere. We all meet up in New Orleans. We have a good old time all week. It's like a week long party. And um, normally, it's me, two other guys, we drive down there, right? We've been driving down there, make that 12 hour drive every time, right? So um, on the way back, um, get to Durham, and um, I was actually dropping off the rental car. So I was on 15501, dropping off the rental car at Enterprise. But I said, man, I'm hungry. I'm going to get something to eat first. I'm going to drop the rental car off. So I stopped by McDonald's, and um, what did we have? I think we had we had a Lincoln something or another. Real nice car. Real, real nice. Let us see. It was, like, fully loaded, right? So um, so I pull up at McDonald's. I'm, like, the only one there. It's, like, God knows what time in the morning. The only one, I'm the only one there. So I walk in and, um, you know, walk to the cashier. And I'm talking to her. I say, yeah, you know, I want X, Y, and Z. She says, okay. She said, I get that for you, da 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 whoop de She rings me up and um she puts her phone number on the back of the receipt, right? Oh. And she says, make sure that you call me. So I pick up the receipt and I look at the receipt and I said, uh, ma'am, I'm probably not gonna call you. So my thing is this. <laughs> oh. My thing is this. If uh why is it that why is it that women won't lower their standards for a guy, but when but a guy is forced to lower his standards for a woman? Because wait, 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 wait. Let me get into it. Let me get into it. Let me Thank get into you. It. Because I'm like, this went Cause, left. Cause, she cause, out here trying to slide her phone number. She trying but, to Mac at but, the McDonald's. <laughs> but, but this is what I'm saying though. Like, you are a cashier at McDonald's. Like, I don't not nobody's profession, but like I'm not I'm not hustling backwards. But this could have been her weekend gig. Like, this is her part-time. It went, wasn't this on the weekend? It was a Monday morning. Early Monday morning. It still could have been a part-time. She might work third shift. Like, she, you don't she, know her story. She was a whole red shirt working the cashier. I know what the red shirt means. She was a whole red... Now, see, it'd be different. I'm not saying that I would never date anybody that worked at the McDonald's, but you would have to be the store manager or district manager. But I'm not hustling backwards and dating like a fry cook or nothing like that. Maybe maybe she was at Burger King and she was the manager, and now she's at McDonald's and she's working her way up to management. What, like, you don't you know do the that? true story. But you don't know. You, do you didn't that? even call her to ask her I what sure, she was doing I sure at McDonald's. Didn't. I sure didn't because if the shoe was on the other foot and I was that cashier at McDonald's and she pulled up and I said, yo, hit my number, call me later. She was like, boy, buy your broke ass. Hmm. Hold on, but you was at McDonald's. Let's that talk was. about that. That's the only thing that was open. <laughs> so how are we gonna how are we gonna knock her for working at McDonald's? You going to McDonald's? Let's talk about that part. Okay, I can spend my money where I spend my money. Well, she can work where she want to work. Oh my god. Okay. All right. So, all right. So let's back up here. Let's back okay. up here. Let's back up here. So what you're telling me is that if you go to just pick a, a random fast food place that you like to go. I go to Chick-fil-A all the oh, time. All okay. day, every day. Uh, 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 you, I'm you, very loyal. Okay, okay. you go to Chick-fil-A. You sure do go to Chick-fil-A. <laughs> so you go loyal. to Chick-fil-A, right? Yes. And the cashier at Chick-fil-A, right? It says his name on his badge, and under it it says cashier. The cashier at Chick-fil-A puts his number on the back of the receipt. How are you going to respond? A discount. <laughs> get out. <laughs> Just get out. <laughs> yeah, I, can't, I can't even... I can't, can we be serious, please? Yes. I, I mean, I can't knock that. I don't know what he got going on. I would talk to him and see where his mind is. Now, if I talk to him and I see where his mind is and his mind is he he wants to be a cashier forever, then... Okay. All right. So... What I'm what I'm what I'm what I'm talking about is the is the aesthetics of it. Mm-hmm. So nine times out of ten, you know, your average woman is not going to be like, uh, well, I'm going to give him a shot, try to see where his mind is at. In their mind, it's like this nigga work at Chick Fil A. I don't want to be smelling like nuggets and Chick Fil A sauce every day every time I hug up on him. Even though that shit do smell good. I, I was like, I, I, I was like, is this Polynesian sauce? Because. <laughs> But you know, but you, but you get what I'm saying, though. Okay. It's like the aesthetics of it. Is I like, get you. I get you. I see like what you're saying. On, 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 on the average, are. on the average, on the average, because you deep dive in the shit. So on the average, <laughs> on the average, okay, probably would I call them probably not. Right, right. But if the shoe was on the other foot, it'd be look bad at a guy for for curving no. a, for for curving a female in that situation. No, that's. I mean, that's what you want. If 
if you if you've already decided like okay if i'm in a relationship with somebody i don't want to be in a relationship with somebody that works at mcdonald's then that already ruled her out so that's you like what you like okay all right so that's not i don't think that looks bad so so are you taking my side on this one (laughs) (laughs) this is gonna be a first I don't like know if I'm necessarily time. taking. I I guess so because you like what you like. Mm-hmm. So if you don't like the McDonald's cashier, if that's not your type, then that's not your type. So that's not for you. Okay, fair enough. So, um, so okay, so so you're saying that you're saying that you would. Uh, financially date down would you date down would you would you would you date a guy who makes less than you and be comfortable with that long term probably not Mm. long term um initially i'd be okay with it as long as he can He's financially stable enough for himself. Like okay. as long as he's paying his bills, he's he's doing what he needs to do. As long as he doesn't, he's not trying to get with somebody so that they can help him out. Like he's looking for handouts. No. Okay. Well, I'm that, not. Okay, I'm not. I'm not talking about in that sense. I'm talking about more so. Um, uh, let's say you make a hundred thousand a year. Mm-hmm. Would you date somebody that's, that's making 40,000 a year? Because 40,000 a year, you can get your bills paid and do whatever, but you're making a hundred thousand. You're in a whole different tax bracket. Right. I don't think so. Because at that point you're kind of used to a different lifestyle and things that you may want to be able to do together. You can't necessarily do together. Mm-hmm. So you end up financing a lot of it. And it may be okay for the time being, but after a while, you're like, you know, I want somebody to spoil me every now and then. Okay. So, why, why is it, why is it that, uh, uh, why is it that women think that way, but guys aren't allowed to think that way? We, like, it's, it's like, okay, so, it's, it's like, we don't even get a chance to date up. We, we always have to, we always have to date down. Because women, from what you're saying, women want the guy to make more because, or or at least make the same to to feel like, okay, well, you know, uh, I want to be spoiled sometimes, or um, I don't want to always finance shit. Right, um, and I don't think I don't think guys should feel like it's wrong for them to feel that way as well. Um, it it is as far as traditionally, you know, they everybody thinks the guys have to finance things. Like the guy's gonna foot the bill when you're gonna date, or right. the guy is gonna, you know, buy the woman nice things, things like that. Right. So that is socially accepted. That is the that is the social norm. Socially expected. Yes. <laughs> but um but I don't think that's necessarily the case. Like, it, if if a guy says, you know, um, I'm kind of used to doing these things. Give us I, content. What is what is these things? Like, I don't know though. Like, I I I definitely feel that guys should be able to to say, you know, I don't want to quote unquote date down. Like guys should be able to have that option and nobody should look at them and judge them for saying, Oh, I don't want to date this person because they're in this, you know, like you said, this tax bracket. Right. That's fine. Um, but also it is looked at that guys are gonna gonna pay for certain things. So if there is a trip, it seems that, you know, people expect the guy to foot the bill. So it's like, mm-hmm. okay, if she's not making what you're making, um, it doesn't really matter because you're you're paying all the expenses anyway. Right, right, right. So I see both sides of it, but I do feel like guys shouldn't be judged. If a guy says, okay, this is what I, like I just said, if that's not your type, if that's not your thing, that's not that's not who you want to be with, mm-hmm. then that's not that's just not who you want to be with. Gotcha. Okay. All right, fair enough. So, um, speaking of jobs, uh, I know you and I both have uh, 
have had our share of jobs. Um, Dang, been, what? <laughs> had our bro, share of jobs. What look, we've mean? already established that we've known each other a while, bro. Like, yeah, we, we, but I mean, like, had our share of jobs. Yeah. I've oh, been I've, in the same field for a very long time, sir. Okay, well... Uh, on the come up, I've had a bunch of jobs. <laughs> so, so, so before, before, before you came up in the career field that you're in now, mm-hmm. what what jobs did you have? What 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 jobs? Yeah, just tell me what jobs you had. Um, Where'd you work? Before Give me your resume. Before this, I've always I was always in retail. Uh, my first job, I was at Macy's. Seasonally. Which one? At Northgate. Really? Yeah. You was at the Ratchet Mall? <laughs> Don't do that. Northgate is a very stabbed? nice mall. <laughs> Did you see anybody get stabbed? Somebody got shot? No. Oh. People were a little crazy, though, because I was there seasonal, so. Oh, yeah, well, um, you know, Christmas time. Did you, oh, did you ever catch anybody stealing? No. No? No. No, they okay. were stealing. They were a little crazy, but not, not stealing. They could have been. I just I missed it. You was oblivious to Yeah, it. my own business. Okay. Um... Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I was there and then I was retail. Oh, I worked at Route 21 for a while. That was fun. Oh, okay. I know what that is. Then I could get all my little outfits. I was real cute. Um, did you have to, uh, did they make you wear their clothes when you worked there or could you wear I think we were asked to, um, but I mean, when I was working there, that's all I was wearing anyway. (laughs) I remember uh discount popping. I remember I was working at uh, I had got a job at American Eagle, right? So this is around the time where cats were still wearing jabos and shit. So so I had to wear these tight ass American Eagle jeans. This shit was horrible, yo. Like I felt so uncomfortable, but I had to wear it because they would not let me wear like my jabos and Tims to go to work. Yeah, you couldn't wear like a whole brand. Man, look, I used to have tall tees to come down to my <laughs> come down to my knees. Yes, Our fashion was I remember so trash. This era. I remember this era. <laughs> yo, I could fit two of me in my Jabo jeans, yo. I um, swear to God, yo. Right, in one leg. <laughs> in, in one, one leg. leg. <laughs> one man's leg. Oh, man. I wonder if that, that picture of me still circulating around the internet, me and my Jabo jeans outside my parents' house. I got to uh-huh. find that picture. I'm going to post it on the Instagram page. I know there's some with, with some tall tees. I know those are circulating. Really? Yes. You you have to find those for me because I can't find none of those old pictures. With me with the do-rag on, with the straight back braids. I thought I was Trey Songz. <laughs> you did. This is, this is super true. I don't If anybody can find these pictures because I know they're out there because I've seen them. I can see them vividly in my mind. This was happening. Oh, man. I used to have a trash-ass digital camera. Like, you couldn't even see the picture after you took it. All, all you could see was one, two, three. All you, <laughs> that's all you could see. Like, and, and you were you, still posting them, though. I, you, man, look. I didn't even have Photoshop. I don't even think Photoshop existed back then. I used to get in paint and then <laughs> and edit the pictures up. I thought I was, I was, I was charging people to edit pictures. On paint? Yeah. Don't tell nobody else. <laughs> Don't tell nobody Yo, else. Yeah, we had a, we was we was trash. We was trash back in the day, man. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, I had a lot of jobs. Like, um, God, where else did I work, man? I worked at a lot of white places. I worked at World Market. That's like the ultimate white place. But it was pretty cool, though. It was pretty cool. It was a lot of drama there, though. Why is there a lot of drama? Uh, because it was in Durham? no, no, no. Because the the employees were too familiar with the with the management. Like we would go over their house and drink, and I don't even think I was drinking age at that time. Like we we everybody in the store got in trouble for that. Yeah, because it was like me and like several other people that were underage, and we were at at one of the managers' houses drinking. Mm. Yeah, it was it was bad. It was oh, bad. You it telling was bad. all telling all the tea. I mean, shit. She I already was... fired. <laughs> she got fired before I left. Well, um, things you shouldn't do as a manager. <laughs> Don't drink with your uh, with your underage employees. I bet the McDonald's worker wasn't out here drinking with her employees. How you know? I bet she wasn't. Mm. You would know if you would have called her. <sighs> nah, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. I'm Continue. Good. That's only. That's it. That's the jobs you had. Uh oh. I had a bunch of jobs. You got a list. Yeah, I worked at Woo. a warehouse. Oh, so my jobs. Okay, so. It's a list floating around somewhere on Instagram, and it's like 
jobs of a fuckboy or whatever. So I'm looking on this list, and I already crossed off like eight of those jobs, like a warehouse worker, a DJ, a photographer. Like I, and it, the, like it was, it was like a crazy list, and I'm looking like, damn, <laughs> my fuckboy. Absolutely. Yo, I, I am thought, reformed. I thought you already knew that. No, I am reformed. I am reformed. You. Uh, give me reformed. my props. You're mostly reformed. Mostly? What does mostly mean? You're mostly reformed from what I know so far. Oh, I guess. I'll agree. Kinda. <sighs> reformed. I'm not. I'm not with you. I'm not what with were you. The other, what were the other jobs? Uh, on the list? I can't. Yeah. I can't remember. Oh. I can't. I can't remember. Oh, but it's you a, just it's knew a, you hit all of them. No, I didn't say I hit all of them. I said Less. I hit a good eight. Okay. I hit a good eight. Eight out of ten. No, it wasn't eight out of ten. It was like <laughs> I, I want to say it was like fifteen up there. Oh, that's still close. Yeah, it's, it's pretty close. Yeah. I felt yeah. kind of bad after reading that. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. it makes you depressed. No, yeah, you came up. That's yeah, okay. I did. I did. I did. That's I good. Did. That's good. I made good money. Good money. Good. 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 All right. So boom. So. V, I know you're not 30 yet, but you're knocking on the door, right? So do you think... It's a real quiet tap. You no, you're banging it. on that motherfucker. You... It's a real quiet tap. No, you banging on... So, uh, uh, have your standards changed between when you were 25 and now that you're pushing 30? From 25 to 30, slightly. Okay. Like, what? from 20 to 30, absolutely. Okay, but okay. Let, let, okay, let, let, let's broaden the range. From 20 to 30, what, what changed? What, what in your standards has ooh. Have changed? <sighs> Matter of fact, what you graduated when you was 22, 21? You graduated college 21? 22. 22? Okay, so between 22 and 30, what changed in your standards? Um, I learned a lot because... In college, I was in a relationship for five years, um, and I learned a lot. Like once I left that relationship, I was like, "I'm not doing any of the above." Wait, you had, ever a, you had again. a boyfriend all through college? Yes. Did Why you have fun? Did you have fun in college? I mean, I was, I was, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Go ahead. I'm, so <laughs> it's, it's a judgment free zone. It's a judgment free zone. I'm not saying so. Yes. All throughout, I did. Um, I had a guy I was with the whole time. So after that, I was like, "There's a lot of things that I'm not going to do anymore. There are a lot of things I'm not going to tolerate." Um, and even since then, it's still evolved. It's still mm-hmm. evolving. There's like a lot of things that I'm. I know I'm. I'm not going to tolerate. It's things that I've realized that I need from a relationship that I need to be upfront about and say, hey, I need these things. I need X, Y, Z. Are you prepared to give those things? Because if not, then we don't even need to talk. Deep dive. What is X, Y, Z? Um, Communication is very important for me, of course, as, as for anybody. But I'm a talker. And I like to talk on the phone, as we discussed. But I like to talk on the phone. If you're not a phone person... You either need to comp, you not need to. <laughs> you should be willing to compromise. And if you're not willing to compromise, I can't. Like, we need to communicate daily. That's so, important. Okay, so you out here giving, you out here giving ultimatums, but it's not an ultimatum. It's not an ultimatum. I know that it's something that I need. Like, I've realized that I've compromised on it before. And people are like, oh, I'm not really a phone person, or I don't really feel like you have to talk every day. And so, I get in that, I start dating this person, and I'm saying, okay, I understand he doesn't like to talk every day. And then it starts becoming stressful for me because Mm. it's like I want to call him, I want to text him, I want to reach out, but I know he doesn't like that. So now I feel like I can't be myself Ah, because he doesn't like that. So I've realized, okay, I just have to to be up front. Like I'm going to want to talk to you every day. Okay. Because when I feel like I can't, then I'm I'm stressed out and I'm like, oh, um, or other people can start filling that gap. Okay. So, um, so, so you're, so, so when, um, when you're looking towards like the issue of marriage or, or like a serious relationship, like, you know, like the, the five year span, like, 
uh, how important how important does does money become in that situation? Like when do you when do you have that conversation? Like when do you, um, yeah, yeah, it's the hard in that, stuff. In that five year span, when yeah, like okay, so so so, um, say you and that young man you were dating through college for five years. Say y'all were dating. Uh, let's say now you're 35 at this point. When did y'all have that conversation about money? Oh no, we. Okay, so the the dynamics of that relationship. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just saying. But, I'm just saying for the time span. I don't, you know, I don't care right, about the right, aesthetics but, about but it. that's what I'm saying. The dynamics of that relationship different. So, um, I think it. I think for uh, this is a lot. Okay, <laughs> in a in a just general five year relationship, when should you have a financial conversation? I think you need to talk about finances pretty much up front because. So so we be, talk, we talking about first date up front? Or we, no, <laughs> not not first date up front. Once you start once you start getting into okay, I think we're going to want to be in a relationship. Because if you're in this relationship and there are expectations or, you know, he's paying for everything, after a while he might be like, oh, okay, can you, can you get it this time? Or can you do something this time? And if you're not financially stable enough to do that, now you're pressured because you're in this relationship with somebody and y'all never had this conversation about where your finances are. So mm. now you kind of feel you're feeling pressured, like, uh, I do want to do stuff for you, but my money's tight. Yeah. So you kind of need to have that conversation. Like once you start getting a relationship, um, of course, I feel like dating, dating with a purpose is important. So if you're dating for marriage, you definitely need to have that conversation. You need to be like, OK, this is what I'm bringing to the table or this is what I can't bring to the table right now. Got you, got you, got you. Okay, all right. I can feel that. I can feel that. I think, um, I think, for me personally, I think that needs to come later on down the line. That needs to, for for me, that needs to come later on down the line where um, finances may intertwine. You get what I'm saying? So, like later on down the line, like when you know. Like it becomes it becomes it becomes the issue of okay, you know. Either we're either we we're both we're both wasting money, you know, staying in two different spots. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to think about staying together. When that conversation comes up, finances need to need to run its course. Oh yeah, that, you know absolutely. Because it's like okay, well, you know, because that 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 can easily you know make or break the situation, and so you know where you know where you need to go from there. You know, because it's like okay, well, I can't afford this, and I can afford this, and I can't do this, but I can do this. You know, so you know. Or kind of gauge of what you need to compromise, or what areas you need to compromise in, and then um, you know if you're willing to help that person out with whatever financial difficulties they have, you know what I'm saying? Like you just need to know that burden before you take it on. And I agree with that. You definitely, definitely, if you plan on living with anybody, you definitely need to discuss finances because you need to discuss how bills are going to be split or what. Men pay all the damn bills. Just pay it all. Pay, look, just, if she want if she want cable and internet, let her pay that. You everything else you pay, you pay it, pay it, dog. I'm, I'm letting you know right now, pay it. So if you're <laughs> um, going to live together, you definitely need to definitely have the the finance conversation. And ladies and men, please, if y'all are going to live together, get on the lease together. I said because <laughs> because if you're not on that lease together, one of y'all is not obligated to pay. Yeah, that's and true. And you need you need an agreement, a contract. Get on that lease together, and before you get on that lease together, make sure they're not going to leave you high and dry either. Like if they if they are, make sure they credit score something worth losing. If they are <laughs> hesitant about being like, oh, why you got to put me on the lease? Why can't it just be you? Don't don't do it. Yeah, I, yeah don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't. Don't do it. But yeah, be on the lease. Okay. So for 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 you for you in a in a marriage standpoint, for you in a marriage standpoint, you want your husband to make more than you. 
You want your husband to make the same or more than you. We can be equal. Um, we can be equal or around the same. I just... <sighs> because I see it like this. I see it like this. I, I feel like if one of the two parties get incapacitated for any reason... You, know, you need to it, be able to cover two right, people. Right, right. And not even two people because we, if we're talking about marriage, we're talking kids. about kids as well. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, you know, um, one person um, or each person should be making enough to cover the household, in in my opinion. I like, yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like so, that. Yeah, so just in case something happens. Yeah, um, I like you that. Know, and, uh, you know, we come from the era of, <laughs> we come from the era of, you know, uh, uh, you know, black mama's doing whatever to, mm-hmm. to make it happen. You know, mm-hmm. I to, to be honest, I don't know where my mama was pulling that money out of her ass from, but she was she was pulling that money out. They do it. <laughs> they was, do it. She was covering all the bills and then taking care of uh, field trips and all that extracurricular stuff we used to do. So, I mean, you know, but yeah, definitely, um, definitely um, being able to. Yes, I'm, not I, now one that I agree with. with. Yeah. I agree with that. Like, let's be on each of us being able to take care of the full household, mm-hmm. at least. Now, as far as like numbers, saying that you know who makes more, I don't think that matters. As long as as long as one person can take care of the full household, I think that's all that matters. Okay. So so when we when we talk about when we talk about income, um. Do you think gender roles override the income or do income override the gender roles in a relationship? So you're saying that if somebody makes more, that means that they hold more weight in the relationship? Okay, so you know it's certain things that a man is expected to do in a relationship. Like say you were living with a guy and the trash needed to be taken out. Who do you expect to take out the trash? He has got to take out the trash. That's okay. All That's right. a rule for me. That's just because I don't want to take it out, though. <laughs> that ain't got nothing to do with, are but, you the man? Okay. I just don't want to take it out. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> I, 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 I got jokes for you, but I'm not even going to go there with you today. <laughs> so, so I, no, I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. I got you. I feel today. you. So, I feel you. All right, so, uh, it's the middle of the night, somebody's knocking at the door, right? Is it a gender role for the man to go and answer that door or if you're in that situation and you make more, are you going to go answer that door? I feel like the man should go answer the door. Okay. Like, I'm, are you, I'm, pre- I'm just if you're I'm protecting just, your just, house and protecting your family, then go, actually none of us should answer the door, but if it's man versus woman, the man should answer the door. Okay. All right. No, you, what you mean? None of us should answer the door. I'm coming to the door. I got them pistols. I don't know why people knocking at the door. Like that's why I'm coming with the pistol. Not playing. I'm not. with you. I mean, you can go to the so, door. So okay. The so uh, so I had a conversation. Matter of fact, I actually had a conversation this weekend um, with uh, with uh, with an estranged guy. I don't I don't know who this guy was. Um, he was around the bruh, but he he's not a bruh. Um, and he made the comment of um, if. If his wife made more than him, he would expect her to answer the door in that situation. And I just thought that was like profound. And I mind you, this guy's like in his forties. What does the income have to do with protecting the house? And that's and that's what I'm saying. Like I don't know, you know, if he was just talking out the side of his neck, but he made the comment. And I'm looking at him, you know, as a thirty year old, I'm just like, bro, you your your comment is wildly uh Uncomprehend, like I, I can't comprehend like where right. you would pull that comment from. You yeah, know? I don't think that has anything to do but, with income. Income is like the bills or who, maybe who makes financial decisions. Like mm-hmm. if we should buy a new couch or not, that <laughs> might be that might depend on who makes the most money. But who opens the door when there's like danger afoot? Right, <laughs> danger and chaos at the door. I don't care how much you make. Like <laughs> you oh, need to go man. to the door. Right, right, right. Um. So, what's the difference between, in your in your opinion? I'm gonna ask you a question. Okay. In your opinion, what's the difference between being broke and not having money? Okay, for me, I feel like if if you say you know I'm broke. 
Like, you literally have change in your account. Or basically, you just, you don't have money. Right. Um, now, saying, well, I guess that kind of contradicts itself. Because <laughs> saying not having money means, to me, means I don't have money to do extra. Like, my bills are paid. Everything's good to go. Um, I might, I, I have, you know, this money is for me to eat with, or this is money for me to live off of. I might not be able to take a trip or I might not be able to go to the most expensive restaurant, but so I don't necessarily, I don't have money for the extra things. I have money for everything that I need to do, all the things that are necessary for me to live. Mm-hmm. I have money for that. Like, I'm good. So so for you, that's being broke? No. Or that's just not having money? That's not having money. Okay, okay. Being broke is literally having zero dollars. And you okay. might have something else have something else to pay, and you're just like, you know what, I'm broke. Okay. I don't have, I I don't think, have anything. I, I, to me, I think being broke is a mindset. Oh. I think being, I really do think being broke is a mindset. Because you can be broke and be good. Like you can, I've I've really been in situations where I was broke, but I was good. You know, um, you know, not having money. If I say I don't have money, that means I can't do that little bit extra that I want to do maybe that right. month. So you we know? agree on that. Yeah, but being the, the the term of being broke, I just I really do feel like that's a mindset. Because if you continuously tell yourself that you're broke. You're gonna, you know, exude those broke habits, or you're gonna continue to do broke things. Um, just not having money is just like, bro, I just ain't got it right now. I have it next month though. I you like know? that. I have, it, I have it next I two like weeks. That. You know what I'm saying? But I just don't have it right this very moment. I like that. I'll agree on that one. You agree I like on that. that one? Okay. I like, I like right. the way you put that. See, look, I like I, it. I get deep every now and then. You every know? now and then, that was good. I'm yeah. with it. So enough of that. Uh, enough of that seriousness, Vita. <laughs> I got a question for you. Yes. All right. So. Um, would you date a guy with a roommate? At this at, at this age right now, would you date a guy with a roommate? With, with a roommate in the climate of the South, in, in no. Durham, Raleigh, no Chapel Hill, no Garner, no. I uh, I would I rather don't know what other, uh, I would <laughs> rather <laughs> I'm thinking some other surrounding cities. I would rather not date a guy with roommates. They are not forthcoming about their roommates, though. They don't tell you until like, oh, we've been on five dates. I don't, where do you live? Oh, I got roommates. So, oh, I live with such and such. Oh, okay. That makes sense now. Okay. So, all right. So, so this is the thing, right? So in our social climate right now, as a black man, I hate to say it, but a lot of us have been through the legal system, right? So if you've gone through the legal system, um, you may not be making as much money as you could be making if you had no record. And a lot of us don't know how to uh, how to go about getting our records clear, whatever, whatever. So you're stuck at a job that's only paying you X amount of dollars. And you may not be able to live on your own with that X amount of dollars, right? So if they were forthcoming about having a roommate, you still wouldn't date them? Probably not. Okay, so... <laughs> so um, Hypothetically, if you had a roommate right now, would you expect the guy to date you? I don't know. I I, I really can't speak on that. Like I I would like to say no, but probably yeah, I probably would still want to date somebody even though I have roommates. I just haven't been in the situation that I've had roommates. So Okay. I can't necessarily speak for people that do. Mm-hmm. Um but they should they need love too. Maybe the the women with roommates can date the men with roommates. But you know it never works out like that. You know it never works out like I that. I mean, if a guy comes to me right now and he's like, I've got, I've got roommates. Roommates are different from, like, I live with my mom or I live with my brother or I live with my sister. Your like, brother could be your roommate. I mean, it could. <laughs> it could. It, I, guess it, I guess I'm thinking, like, Different, okay, uh, but so, yes. so so a complete yes. stranger rather than somebody who's connected to you by family is is how you're looking at it. No, it can, they can be family too. So yeah, but it depends on the roommate situation. Like, are, are is everybody of the same age and the same? Um, are you sleeping on the couch, my nigga? 
Right. <laughs> Are you sleeping on the couch? Like, there's a lot of other questions to ask. Okay. When you All get right. into roommates. Like, who are these roommates? Okay. Okay. But. So, I, I've, I've noticed, I've noticed the temperature on Facebook. Because I've seen this post from, like, several, several different people talking about how, you know, they won't um, date a guy with a roommate. And. You know, I'm looking at it like, but you live at home with your mama. Like, why? That's why they don't want to date a guy with a roommate because you can't. They can't go to your house. You can't come to their house. Like, yeah. they need a they what need a house mean? to go to. What you? Wait a second. So, so, okay. So, if a guy has a roommate, the girl can't come to his house. For, for why not? I don't know. That's between. Him, that's him uh, and his roommates. Okay. Well, maybe 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 it's a comfortability factor. Maybe it's that. Maybe yeah. she, she can't get as comfortable as she would like to get over. Yeah, because he has house. a roommate. Okay, I and that. I and I and I can see that. I can see that because I I mean of course you know I've I've had roommates in, back in the day, so I can I can understand, um, I can understand that temper. I mean, but I guess I guess I'm looking at it from the standpoint of, um, you know I used to be that guy, so it's like. Yeah. I'm like, you know, if, if if I'm in a roommate situation, I got my own room, my own bathroom. You know what I'm saying? Like, the only common area we probably share is the kitchen, and I'm probably going to be the only one cooking. So then it's really, like, it's your place, and then somebody else happens to live there. Right. He's just come in and out. That's different. Yeah, okay. All right, That's, cool. Does he leave when you have company over? <laughs> that sounds real old. When you no. have company. Does he no, absolutely <laughs> does he not. You, you know what? You know what? I had I had a house full of... Let me tell you, let me Ooh, tell you about tell my college story. life. Um, my cameraman AJ here knows this very well because my boy was in need and I and I looked out for my boy, you know. <laughs> I love you, bro. I love you, man. God, but no, I I don't know what you're talking about. But no, nah, man, um, but no, nah, in all seriousness, man. 13. 13, I'm gonna say. Can't but <laughs> but no, nah, in all in all seriousness though, you know I've I've been that guy in that situation, and I and I understand that you know it can be a little uh a little forthcoming to where you know the the ladies may not uh may not feel comfortable like Yo, you got all these niggas in your house, but you said I could come over. It's yeah, like that damn, is I thought awkward. these niggas was gone. <laughs> That's awkward. That's real awkward to come in and all these people are there, and it's like um. But. But you know what? You know what? I do. I do. I do like that. I had roommates at that point in my life because at that point in my life, everybody wanted to party, and my house was always a party. It was always something going on in that house. Like every every time I walked in, I came from class and just music playing, people dancing, food being cooked. Like every something was going on every day. But like it was never a boring moment. That's different. You're expected to have roommates in college. I'm saying now, it, like, if I'm if I'm talking to somebody 30 and he's got roommates, what if he's still in school? In what kind of school? He's in grad school with roommates. <laughs> no, maybe he um, maybe he started his um, his bachelor's late. Why does he, I'm still? Why does he have roommates? Okay, he started his bachelor's late. He's 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 putting himself. Full time student in school. Okay, well he needs to focus on his schooling. Okay. So in to order to afford a place to stay, he has a roommate. I mean, if he has a roommate, like you said, like you said, you weren't dating the girl at McDonald's. I don't necessarily know if I'm gonna date the guy with a roommate. Okay. All right. But just because I have dated people that do live with other people and because I don't live with anybody. Then they feel like my house is a chill spot. Like oh, we always need yeah, to be at yeah, your yeah, place yeah, 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 because yeah, you yeah, don't yeah, have. Yeah. So that's kind of that's probably I'm a little biased. I'm kind of I'm kind of standoffish because now that you you know now that you're dating somebody that doesn't have that mm-hmm. that factor at home. Now you're like oh because even Let if me grab you my are, PlayStation. yeah even <laughs> if you are comfortable with your roommate. Like, now that you're with your girl, now you feel like I'm more comfortable over there. Like, over here, I can, I can be ha- however I want to be. It's a, little, it's, a little more, it's a little more comfortable when you're dating that person than okay. you're just living with somebody. Okay. So, somebody that has a roommate is going to be at my house on my couch all the time. Yeah, you're probably right. So, I need you to have your own place. 
with your your own couch to be on. Maybe I want to come be on your couch. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so all right, um, so now that we not you know uh, finances and roommates out the way, um, uh, value bracket. So when I say value bracket, the value that you that you bring to a relationship. So okay, so when you when when I if a guy was to ask you on a date, what do you bring to the table? What is going to be your your response? Yes, that's a good question. I mean, I feel like I am a very bright, intelligent, beautiful woman that um, I'm very ambitious. I am going to make sure things get done. Um, And I'm very loyal. And I'm going to make sure that um, I'm going to keep things in order. Like, that's, that's who I am. That's what I do. So... I mean, I guess that would be my value. Like, I know, I know, I I know I'm a great woman, and I know I'm gonna. I know I'm. I know as far as a family, I know I can keep my family in order, and that's what I feel like the woman's role. Okay. Okay. That you know what? That was very well put. I kind of like that. That's very well put. Thank you. That's very well put. Thank you. That's very well put. So, all right. So. So, if a guy was to, if a guy was to, if you were to ask a guy that question, like, what, what key points would you look for him to say? Um, I would look for him to also be ambitious. Okay. Um, I would look for like him Like, ambitious, to- like an inspiring rapper? Ambitious? I'm going to need for him to, um, No. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying. I was trying. <laughs> but no. Um, okay. Unless you're a good rapper, you already like have some stuff going on, um, then maybe we can talk about it. But no, just being ambitious as far as being greedy, being hungry for the next, for the next step, for the next goal, like setting goals and, and achieving them and knocking them out. That kind of ambitious. Like I have things that I want to do. Yes, this is where I am, but this is where I want to be. Or not even saying, like, this is where I am. Like, everybody thinks sometimes that you have to keep moving up. Sometimes you can move out. You can expand. Mm. So you can still be in the same place, but but gain more knowledge, gain more even in your current role. You don't always have to move up to the next role. You, you- need to stop dropping all this knowledge <laughs> on this podcast because I'm... I'm- oh, shit, no <laughs> one. <laughs> I was trying to hit the applause button, but I got it. I got it. I got it. Applause is for you. I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna learn this little soundboard thing. <laughs> Please do. Look, I'm, I'm not hitting that one. <laughs> I'm not hitting that one. All right. So, um, but yeah. Uh, but yeah. I, I, are you, okay. All right. I, I see where you're coming from. I see where you're coming from. Okay. So, 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 so dating standards. Dating standards. What are your just immediate dating standards that you have to have if it's a, if they don't have it, you on to the next one. Um, willing to communicate, open and honestly, judgment free zone. It has to be a judgment free zone because you cannot be comfortable with somebody that you feel like is going to judge you for everything that you say or do because then you're not going to tell them anything because you don't know how they're going to react. So open and honest communication is number one. Like you can't do anything without open and honest communication. Right. Um. Also, you need to be able to take care of yourself, like really taking care of yourself. Um, That's important to me because I take care of myself. So I need somebody that is doing the same thing. Also, I don't mind guys with kids, but take care of your kids. Don't be a baby daddy. Be a father. So that's important. Because if you're like, oh, I have a couple kids and I ain't never seen them, like, where are your kids at? <laughs> mm. where, where are these kids? Because I know I want to have kids eventually. Right, so right, right. if I have kids with you and you already are used to not being around your kids, then how do I know what you're going to do when my kids come around? Right, right, right. So okay. those are, I think those are like the major 
the major the major key one the that major you're, key that, you're that, that you're hitting on like when y'all have conversations like okay I'm gonna I'm slide this question in here today I ain't gonna hit him with all all the questions at right. once I'm gonna slide them in maybe once a week in. or whatever and see and and sometimes sometimes you don't even have to ask questions like I don't really like starting off something asking a bunch of questions right. I like to have open dialogue so if we we just keep talking keep talking and I'm learning things right. because if I keep talking to you. I'm going to know that you get your your child every other weekend or you get your child on Wednesdays. I'm going to know that because we've already had this. We, we've been talking or like because I know if I plan a date on Wednesday, you're like, oh, no, I have I have my kid on Wednesdays. Now I know. Now I know you are in your child's life or. If I if we start off talking and you already sending text messages all day and I know I'm not a texter or. If you start, you know, sometimes it's just people having opinions about stuff. And if I state my opinion and it gets it gets met with like a lot of harsh opposition, then I'm like, oh, yes, Mm -hmm. you you're very judgmental and I can't do that. But I don't have to ask you if you're judgmental. All I have to do is share my opinion and see see how you act. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Um. So. 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 I agree with you on. I. You know. Pretty much everything. Oh, look at that. Pretty much oh, everything. We're doing yeah. good today. I, I do. No. I do. I do agree with you on pretty <laughs> much everything. So. Um. I think probably. Probably one thing that I would add in there, is just. Open communication, with their folks. Regardless of you know who whoever raised them, because you know not right. not all the time the parents raise them. Sometimes it's the grandparents or whatever. Family whatever. connection. Yeah, you know I think that's probably the only thing. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. Family connection. Is because that, that I mean that says a lot. Like if you if you're out doing stuff with your family, I know you're family oriented and you possibly want a family. Because that you know that's that's kind of uncomfortable to a question for a guy to ask a woman like, do you want to have kids? Nigga, you trying to get me pregnant? Like, no, I'm not trying to get you but I'm I'm asking because that could be a deal breaker for me, you know, mm-hmm. if you don't want kids, you know. Um Okay. Speaking of deal breakers, what what is what is what is on the top of your deal breaker list? What if a guy says this, you are out of there. Like I'm running for the hills. Um, I guess like, like we just talked about, if a guy doesn't want kids, okay, that's a that's a deal breaker. As far so as like, like a, what if he doesn't want to have kids, but he's willing to adopt? <laughs> I saw the eyebrow go up, so I already know that's a no. I'm, I'm, I'm when just, the eyebrows start twitching, that's it's, <laughs> it's a difference between not being able to conceive and just not wanting to have kids. Like, I don't understand what the difference between not having kids and adopting would be. I, it's it's a lot of situations out here, and I feel like there's somebody out here that does not want to uh, have kids but wants to adopt. They can they can physically have kids. They just don't want to have them and, and want to adopt. Okay, that's... I mean, it, it sounds ass backwards, but the world is ass backwards, so... It, now that I agree <laughs> But the world is ass backwards, um, so... Stranger things have happened. That's just weird to me, so that would probably be a no. Like, I'm just, I'm, that's too much confusing. confusion for me. So, yeah. But I guess I think that's one of my one of my deal breakers. That would be my deal breaker. Okay. Okay. I think. Okay. I understand that. <laughs> I can understand that. That one's a big deal. But So what is your deal breaker? What is your... You, you heading for the heels. That's, that's oh, it. You man. done. Um, on the top of my list, um, See, this is hard. <laughs> yeah, it is a hard question. So hard on the question. top of my list probably would be, um, just no, just no, just no orientation with the family. Like, um, and I, and I've noticed that with millennials, they don't fuck with their families like at all. You know, it's not like a large percentage of us, but it's some. It's like, yo, I don't fuck with my family like at all. Like, I come from a family where we had family functions. Like, we did stuff together. Like, we were active in each other's lives. So, I don't want that to change with you know whoever I get with. You know, I I you know, I want to be able to bring the stuff that I got going on. You know, what I'm saying, and vice versa or whatever, yep. whatever. You know, like Absolutely. if I go because. 
I mean, I would even say this. I have cousins right now that are my age that don't fuck with the family. Like, for, for whatever reason, you know, they just, I'm the cousin that's going out of town seeing everybody. But I always get love every time I go out there. So, you know, say if I go out, you know, I don't want to go out by myself, you know, bring my lady with me. Hey, you know, da, 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 hey, how you doing? Da, da, Absolutely. You know, because, you know, they spread off across the country. You know, I, they don't see me that often. I'm like the only set of both sides of the family that live in North Carolina. So, OK, see, yeah. all my family lives here. So lucky it might be it might be a Saturday night. I might just drive home and come back. So, but yeah, my family expects if I am seeing somebody because of how close we are and how much, how often we see each other, then yeah, they, they expect to see them at least, you know, a few times. They don't expect me to always be by myself. If I'm with somebody, they're like, oh, you keep driving down here by yourself? Okay, where he at? But you have a, uh, you, you got a lot of, a uh, lot of ladies in your, in your family, right? And my family's all women. Yeah. So, so they, so they, so they try, they try to vet. They try to get him down here and, you know, they, they off talk to you in the kitchen. They don't pull a homeboy to the side on the side of the house. And they're like, yo, so what's your intentions with my niece? What's your intentions with my cousin? Honestly, no, they're not doing that. <laughs> they, they are watching him interact and observing and everybody's probably like side eyeing or looking at each other from across the room. You know how women talk. Yeah. We always talk from across the room. Like we don't necessarily have to speak to each other. And then when he leaves, oh, they're going, they're going I'm, in. I'm pretty sure. They probably, going they, in. they probably hit him with the, he probably say something. They put, mm. <laughs> That's all they, mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, Like, um, we're going to, we're going to discuss that later. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to that. That's it for us. We out of here. Um, make sure you follow the podcast. <laughs> I'm about to leave without giving the drops. Right. Make sure you're, you follow you the need podcast. To tell him how to find us. Uh, D. The letter N, the letter D, pod on Instagram. Uh, we, are, we are live on face, Facebook. We are live on YouTube. So make sure you catch the audio from all your streaming platforms every Wednesday. The video drops every Friday. Um, you can follow me at uh, King Bach. That's K-V-N-G-B-A-K on Instagram, Twitter. Um, yeah, if, you, if you're looking for me. And you can find me on Instagram at infragile underscore phoenix. All hearts and minds clear. We good? I think we're good. Are I think sure? we're good. I feel good about I feel good about today. Mm, very serious today. <laughs> tomorrow I'm back with I mean tomorrow. Next, next week. Sunday. Oh, next Sunday I'm back with my shit because um we are going to outnumber V on the podcast. I'm just let y'all know that right now. So V ain't gonna know how to handle herself yes, on the podcast they're next gonna week. They're going to outnumber me, yep. so I don't know how it's to feel. Be a, it's gonna be a so new... make sure y'all tune in so y'all can so y'all can support me. I need all my ladies. I need all of the beehive. <laughs> I need all of y'all supporting me because it's gonna be two against one. Okay, I need y'all to I need y'all to collect the files. I need y'all to come with me. Oh my um, god, I'm not. With, yes, I'm I need not doing I need all of y'all to be here. Um, and we're going to try to start doing some more outings. So if you check out our Facebook and our Instagram, you'll be able to see us hanging out in these streets. Right, right, right. And we'll do, uh, we'll do impromptu meet and greets, you know, we'll be there. We'll take pictures with you. (laughs) (laughs) All right, but we out of here, man. Peace. Peace.